everyone welcome back i hope you're staying safe out there today i wanted to talk about my caspa application before we get started i just want to mention as a disclaimer this is not all the things you should have on your caspa application not having these things does not make you not a good applicant for the caspa application what i'm about to share is just things that i have kind of to give you more or less an idea of what the application pool might look like once you apply i also wanted to share my statistics to get those out there that maybe might be in the same boat with a low GPA or feeling a little, I don't know, discouraged in applying, that you should apply anyway. I'm also going to talk about the things I think are considered very important and might help you stand out. So if you want to learn more, please keep watching. <music> The first thing I want to talk about is volunteering. So I did accumulate a lot of volunteering time. Um, I did volunteer in my community, Habitat for Humanity. Um, I volunteered a lot with my school clubs, like the Biology Club, the Pre-Med Biomedical Society, Biological Honor Society. So I just joined a lot of clubs that interested me and that I knew were giving, were giving time back to the community. I don't want to say um, volunteer like with this certain organization or with this certain group just volunteer anywhere where you feel your heart wants you to go volunteer it's very important to also start recording the dates the times and how many hours you are volunteering with these societies for my volunteering I had about I don't know I want to say about 1500 hours down I accumulated a couple uh, about I don't know maybe 10 to 15 organizations throughout the years and I just added all that information to my CASPA application. In regards to leadership roles, um, I was very involved too. It wasn't until, um, I think I said, like my sophomore year or junior year that I started being like, okay, maybe I could run for an officer position. I was the vice president um, for a society in my campus and then I was the secretary for another society. That really does get you to stand out in the sense that, okay, like you can multitask, you can be a student and you also delegated uh, with other with societies on campus. So it's very important that you write down what your job description entailed, how many years you were doing that, and what you learned out of it as well. I really think at least having one or two down could be a good, um, I guess, addition to your resume, but you don't have to have these. These are just some, some of the things that I did. And in regards to my leadership roles, it was my last two years of my undergraduate career and which what description that entailed. I also did some research. Um, I know research is something that is not mandatory, but like I said, this is just something I did. I remember in my ecology class in my undergrad graduate career, we were just in class and then I remember um, one of my mentor, ex-mentors now, um, she came into class and she was like, hey guys, um, once class is over, um, I need some research uh, assistance if anyone's interested. Just going around town and, and, and catching like frogs and snakes and stuff like that. And I looked over at my best friend and I was like, we have to do this. This is something so cool. And it's something like, it's just not in the norms of like, you know, like I'm going to go pipette or I'm going to work for a lab or... It was just something different, not saying that there's anything wrong with those research opportunities. What I'm saying is if there's a research opportunity out there or something that's being offered, jump on it. It was something different. It was something nice. And, and we ended up finding something interesting on some of the frogs we were catching. And we actually ended up publishing an article on a herpetology magazine. So that was a plus. And that was just something really unexpected. It wasn't something that I was trying to gain out of it it was just an opportunity that presented itself and i and we just jumped on the opportunity so what i would recommend is you know maybe going around campus and, and visiting the departments that you're interested in and asking if they need any research assistance uh, in regards to my research it was about two years of research and the publication in regards to shadowing um i started shadowing i think my sophomore year of my undergraduate career local doctors in my community i started doing primary care shadowing and then i was like okay i have these couple hours down or these locations where i was shadowing where else am i interested in what other fields am i interested in so pediatrics was one of them and just family practice so i just ended up just shadowing more within those fields 
Um, not that you have to do those. What I'm trying to say is just try to shadow what you're interested in. Keeping tabs and the reminders of how, how long you've shadowed with them, when did you start shadowing with them, and then getting their information down because I know Caspa really wants to know when you started, how many hours you did, and if there's someone that they can call to ask about. So having all that information always, whether it be with your volunteering, your leadership roles, your research activities, and your shadowing is very important to have down. So shadowing, I had about 300 hours and I just added all of that with the information that CASPA required of me. Some other stuff that I think is pretty I don't know, maybe if you have this down, you could add. I was on a dean's list for some of the years of my undergraduate career, and I feel like anything that you remember or any achievements or any certifications that you got, I think is very important to include in your CASPA application. So going back to talking about certifications, I know um, I was looking into what certifications I could do that interested me and that I could add to CASPA. So I think a year before I actually applied to the CASPA website, I got my basic life support certification. So that was something I had on my application as well. I also wanted to mention that it's important or maybe you can start looking into medical summer programs. Like I said, I was involved in the University of Texas um, medical branch in Galveston for a summer program back in 2013, um, where they gave us a stipend, they gave us um, boarding and room. And we were going to the medical school, we were dissecting in the cadaver labs, we were shadowing, we were getting to know more about the medical field, we were going to seminars and learning and we had lectures. And that was really interesting and it just boosted my confidence and more reassurance and that this is the field I want to be in. So look around um, to see if there's any summer programs your campus is offering. You can always look online to any medical schools or PA programs near you to see what kind of summer programs they're actually offering for you as well. Now, talking about grades, I know this is the big one. Um, so I'm not gonna disclose my GPA just because I don't think it's important to disclose that. And that's kind of, I don't know, a little bit what I don't want this video to revolve around, but just know that it was between a 3.3 and a 3.7. So as you can tell, I didn't have a perfect 4.0. I knew my GPA was kind of on the average side. Um, so I knew that applying to PA school was very competitive. So I knew that since my GPA was kind of eh, uh, I kind of had to make it up with my volunteering, with my research, with my shadowing, with my leadership roles, with my job. So I knew there was had to be some sort of balance since my grades were kind of okay. I knew I was kind of on the inside, so I knew I had to make it up on the other side. I also went back to school. Actually, I didn't retake these. I just never took them because uh, my um, undergraduate curriculum didn't require them at the time, or I think I replaced them with another course. It was genetics and microbiology. So at my local community college after work, I was just going to class and, and I took those two classes and that actually bumped up uh, my GPA a lot. So I really highly recommend if you're having like GPA issues or you think it's a little bit low, going back to school and retaking some classes or taking some additional classes to get your grades up and your GPA up is something I did and it really helped and I highly recommend that. So I know I made a video already talking about um, what I did or how I prepared for my essay. So I'm going to link that below in the description box just so you guys can go ahead and watch that. So I know CASPA opens around late April. I started getting my essay ready since January. But in that video, it tells more detail about how I gathered the information to just develop the uh, essay that ultimately ended up getting me into PA school. So I started working that really early. I also, around that same time, I started looking for recommendators. So people I knew I trusted and I knew could write a recommendation letter for me. So giving yourself a good wiggle room or time frame to get all that stuff organized and ready before CASPA opens, I recommend a lot. Now, in regards to my careers or my jobs that I had, I don't wanna say careers, I ended up going back and applying as an anatomy teaching assistant for the laboratories. And it's something I did for about a year and a half and I really enjoyed it. That's just something I did and I kind of recommend if you're, you know, thinking about something that's still educational and it's still during school time. I know they worked really well with my uh, schedule, so it's something I highly recommend. It was super fun. 
I was offered a really good teaching position where I was going to get paid a decent dime. And um, then I also applied to scribe at my local ER. So I remember around that time I was like, oh my God, like what am I going to pick? Nice pay or am I really just going to like push PA school to the side? Because working full time as a teacher, I don't think I could handle putting PA school back in the burner and just working as a teacher for a couple of years. I knew in my heart I wanted to apply to the PA program. And that's something I wanted. I ended up declining the teaching position and I ended up scribing for three years uh, in my local ER and that's something I don't regret to this day. I do think about it and wonder like what would it have been for me to just accept that teaching position and where would I have been now? Would I have even been in the program? Who knows? Um, but I chose my heart and what I knew was right for me and what I wanted ultimately over I guess good pay and something momentary or what I wanted at the moment, I guess. And I don't regret that decision. I learned so much in my ER. I met so many great colleagues and so many friendships I made with mid-level providers and physicians and nurses and techs. And I, I learned so much and I don't regret it one bit. So really think about what you want and what your heart desires and what your ultimate goals are when you're looking for those jobs because it's really easy I guess to get distracted by a really good pay like try to tackle two birds with one stone like get a good paying job because at the end of the day we do need an income to survive you know and apply to the programs because it's not that cheap um so try to look into your research jobs that you really like whether it be phlebotomy or a medical assistant Looking for something that intrigues you in that aspect is something I would highly recommend. So that's it for this video guys. I just wanted to mention that I hope you guys really focus on balancing your application and not just solely focus on your GPA. I really think it's all about balance and having a balanced application. If you know you're strong in one aspect and you're weak in another, try to make that other part shine. I really hope you guys feel confident and enthusiastic about applying regardless of your GPA and hopefully this video helped you guys thinking into what you can probably modify or tweak or add to your application. Good luck to everyone applying. If you guys like I said have any questions go ahead and comment down below. Always believe in yourself and I'll see you guys next time.